hope you guys can hear me. I hope you guys uh, are having a wonderful day. Welcome, welcome, welcome to DrBoysTV.com, the home for intelligent black people. My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins, and I want you all to uh, 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 let us know that you're here. Put the name of your city in the chat. Uh, I see Tara and uh, from West Palm Beach, King Mansa Musa, Jermaine Trusty from Camden. Shout out to Camden. What's up, Camden? I think I just made a deal to speak like in New Jersey somewhere. I got to go look it up. Once I find out, I will let y'all know. Um, Crazy Boss from Hempstead, New York. Clarence Wilson, San Francisco, B1 to you too. Jay Lilly from Naples Island, California. Uh, expect the best. Good to see you. All right, so let's let's hop into the conversation today. We have a really special guest, and I hope you will uh, say hello to the guests as you come in. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorite rappers on the entire planet. Her name is Akila Nihanda, and Akila Nihanda, a.k.a. the Super Goat. That's what I'm going to start calling her. <laughs> She's the super goat, and uh, and she has a lot to say. She's just she's a good artist, y'all. Y'all got to check her out. So anyway, without further ado, I'd like to ask my sister, how you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing blessed, definitely. Grateful to be on this platform and grateful for being uh, known as the super goat. <laughs> yeah, that's what you are. That's my nickname. That's going to be my nickname for you, the super goat. I love Cause, it. Because I, I, I just, you know, I'm going to tell you. Um, uh, if you have, if y'all haven't heard Akila perform, like or heard see one of her like songs or whatever, you, you got to just check it out. You got to check it out. Um, uh, I, you know, and, and it, it will be tempting to say that she's one of my favorite artists, but a favorite female artist. But that's the wrong way to say it. She, you're just one of my favorite artists. Period. And um, and and it's funny because when I went in and I put you up on my Facebook page or my Instagram. Back before before they took it down, you know, you know, crazy black men like me, we get we get deplatformed all the time. But it don't matter. I got a, I got a thousand platforms, so I can just keep it moving. But um, well, you know, I I said to the guys, I said, you know, I think this might be one of the greatest rappers like that anybody's ever heard. One of the greatest rappers alive. And then at that point, I I unleashed the floodgates. Of, of course. No, you crazy? What you right. talking about? It, Biggie, Pac, but Jay Z, da da. But, you know, let's start right there then. Let's start right there. You know, mm -hmm. do you think that there are any female MCs that even get considered in these conversations about the greatest rapper alive? And if not, why not? I think that Nicki Minaj is brought up a lot in that conversation. Um, I think she definitely is uh, brought up a, a whole lot when it comes to men, like, you know, shouting out uh, female MCs. But I think that it's definitely male dominated, you know what I mean? And and a lot of female MCs are not taken as seriously. Um, there's a lot of uh, probably politics, you know, behind that. And mm. there's also a lot of, you know, well, a female isn't going to really make it without a, a male rapper's cosign and all that type of stuff. And so... Um, you know, so I, I think that there's just a lot that goes behind that. But I personally, I think that, um, well, one of my favorite rappers, and of course she, she's a singer too, but is Lauren Hill. And, um, you know, she hasn't come out with like a rap album since Miss Education per se. But to me, she's still one of the top, you know what I mean? Of course she was in the Fugees and then she had her solo career. But for me, Lauren Hill is the top for me. Well, you know, I mean, Lauren Hill, um, uh, give me a yes in the chat of every, everybody. If you've heard um, Akila's work, um, you, you reminded me of Lauren Hill. You know, it, it was um, and, you know, right. And for somebody, you know, I'm, I'm a little older. I'm a, I got a couple of years on you. And uh, and, you know, I re like I remember the 90s as a grown up. You know, I don't know what, what year. What, what, what year were you born? 91. 91, <laughs> right. So you you were a kid. I was a grown up. But. I remember Lauren Hill and what she represented, you know, to music period, not even just hip hop or anything like that. And I remember all the respect that she got. And uh, and I instantly like when you uh, you had a song where you were referenced Lauren Hill and it didn't surprise me. I said, yeah, she's of she's of that same tradition, that same energy. Um, what and, you know, maybe an artist that you don't remind me of uh, would be saying Nicki Minaj right? Mm -hmm. uh, for obvious reasons. But, you know, the funny thing is. Nikki actually said that her favorite her favorite artist was Lauren Hill. <laughs> Interesting. Right. Interesting. Okay. Right. So it shows you okay. that that dynamic. I think that when it comes to um okay, let's just go back. So I started rapping because I saw the the rise of 
Nicki Minaj. And when I say the rise of it, I'm really talking about the image that went behind that, right? And when I saw that there was like this colorful Barbie gimmick, um, this kind of like going after young people, because when you go after young people, you tend to use bright colors, pink, you know, um, all of these playful, whimsical wigs and, you know, bright colors. And so that to me targets the youth, right? So I was thinking to myself, and I'm at I'm at Howard University when her mixtapes start going really big. And I was like, man, like I'm seeing where this is headed and I'm seeing that she's, you know, charismatic. She uh, has bars and she's theatrical. I already see where this is headed and it's going to lead to a whole lot of young black girls um, attaching themselves to her and in that line attaching themselves to that sexualized image and, and so look that's Nelani tapping me talking about she need a paper towel <laughs> <laughs> that's all right that's all right <laughs> that, that, and i, I want to ask you about that in a minute okay. you know um and in fact actually uh i think that'd be a good uh segue into this um did you see uh by chance my, my wife uh, uh dr alicia talked about this mm -hmm. there was a young miami who was uh, on an interview and she basically said, you know, I I'm, I'm a whore. And yeah. he said, no, like, I'm really a whore <laughs> and, and like, like proud, you know, almost like <laughs> saying I'm, I'm a veteran. I serve my country, you know, and I guess she's not serving the country. She's serving people in other ways. Um, uh, you know, and, and then they said, well, what about your daughter? Do you want right. your daughter? Cause her daughter's about the same age as yours. You know, they're both right. beautiful right. little black girls that can be anything. And uh, and when they asked her about her daughter, you could just see her freeze up. You saw her brain kind of like process like she's looking like they say when you're like accessing certain parts of your brain, you look in you look in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. So she starts really thinking like, no, 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 my, she ain't gonna be no city girl. She ain't gonna be no city girl. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and the guy was like, well, I mean, if that's what mommy's doing, like, why wouldn't you want your daughter to like follow in that tradition? Mm -hmm. uh, what did you think about that? I, actually, I did a song about it um and what i was really getting at in the song is that this is a community issue you know what i mean this is something that i feel that we as a community as the black community has failed um tremendously when it comes to highlighting and glorifying the pimp life high, highlighting glorifying strippers highlighting and glorifying people who are drug dealers, like highlighting and glorifying all the toxic um, lines of work, if you would say, you know, all the toxic and low level, um, I guess you could say um, hood work, you know? And I think that because we as a community have allowed uh, that type of I guess you could say, um, what's the word? Uh, you know, just glorification of it. Then, of course, you're going to have, you know, women calling themselves these things and rappers calling themselves a whore and, you know, being proud to say that they're a stripper, you know, proud. And again, I'm the type of person, these are all my sisters at the end of the day. So I've never been the type of person that is just gonna uh, talk down on them because I feel like they're literally a, the product of an environment that is glorifying these things. And so when she said she didn't want her daughter to be a city girl, I was waiting for her to explain it. And when she explained it, she basically was saying it's because I didn't raise her in the same type of condition that I was raised in. She was basically saying that my environment called for me to be a scammer or called for me to be all these things. Of course, that's not an excuse. However, she was reared in a in an environment where in the song, I say she clearly wasn't protected properly because protection doesn't start with just the physical, right? Protection starts with the mind and protection starts with teaching women, uh, girls, their value and it starts with teaching them the importance of um, loving yourself, loving your mind, 
loving uh, the fact that you are more than just your body. So she wasn't protected in that way. She wasn't, um, she wasn't told or taught that your, your brain is, is of far more value than your body parts. You know, she wasn't taught that. So I look at it as a failure um, of the community. So I say we have to, and this is something that you do a lot, which I'm, I'm happy that you do, is we have to hold the entire community accountable when you see things like this. And of course, a lot of people understood my position and also a lot of people were saying that, well, even though she is a product of her environment, she has to realize that she's on a platform. And I'm like, well, just because they're on a platform don't mean that they're gonna all of a sudden wake up and you know all of a sudden mm -hmm. understand the importance of subliminal messaging, direct messaging, programming, uh, the psychological damage that uh, someone can do to an entire generation. Um, they don't. I don't think they really understand that because I, I think that if they did, then the, then it wouldn't be so. Uh, our sisters wouldn't feel so proud, you know, to to call themselves these things. There's no way because they're actually very smart girls. You don't get to where they are without having some form of intelligence and without having some type of street smart and having a, a work ethic and hustle. So we understand that they're smart. We understand that they're intelligent. So there has to be a misunderstanding somewhere where there has to be a miscommunication. Um, and most importantly, like Lauren Hill's album is called A Miseducation. Because clearly these girls, you know, my again, they're my sisters in the hip hop game, a lot of them have been taught and told that their bodies is, you know, the in all be all. And if they don't believe that, they're at least saying, well, I'm gonna use that in order to make money. Even if I don't, even if I know that it's not the end all be all, I'm gonna still use it to profit. And that's, that is literally prostitution. When you, when you break down the, the definition of what prostitution is, it's basically getting money uh, or services for your body or your services pretty much. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, everybody who's watching, I'm speaking with Akila Nihunda, and um, uh, she is a, a promising artist uh, out of Houston that is uh, super good, representing H-Town H -Town well. And uh, I'm putting her website here because uh, if you happen to live in the Chicago area, she's performing in Chicago on, is it July 30th? Is that right? Yeah, July 30th, Sunday. And, and, and you're actually going on tour to a lot of cities, and people can find that information out on your website, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. And so Akilasworld.com, I'll put this on the screen. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify, by the way, this podcast can be found on Spotify. If you look at my name, Boyce Watkins on Spotify, you'll find it there. And uh, Akila is spelled, I'm, I'm going to spell it for those who are listening. It's A-K-I-L-A-H and it's uh, with an S, Akilasworld.com. So I have to spell it because we ain't going to be messing her name up. You better learn how to spell it right because she's about to blow up, y'all. Uh, anyway, uh, do me a favor, everybody. If you haven't done it yet, please hit the thumbs up button. Thumbs up, share, subscribe. You're watching DrBoysTV.com, the home for intelligent black people. And we're talking about uh, not, not just what Akila's doing in her music, but also just talking about music in general and, uh, and the way hip hop, unfortunately, some segments of it, not all of it, but some segments of it have bastardized uh, what we represent as black people, uh, I, I think it maybe is bastardized what the black woman represents. Uh, my wife, uh, Alicia, um, Dr. Alicia Watkins, uh, Keila, she, she talks about the stereotypes of black women. She talks about the Jezebel stereotype, the Sapphire, uh, which I guess that's the like angry neck swinging black woman. Mm -hmm. uh, the Jezebel is the prostitute, uh, the Mammy, uh, you know, the <laughs> angel mama figure. And uh, I think that there might've been one more, but anyway, it was like, I, you know, when I was hearing about this, I said, okay, this is not new. You know, um, there, there are, it's so interesting because, you know, when we look at, say, what Megan Thee Stallion is doing, super talented artist, mm -hmm. Cardi B, if you're into lyricism, Cardi B is actually quite a good lyricist. We know these things. Uh, and then you can even spin over into areas that are that are hip hop culture ish, but not quite hip hop. Even like, for example, we had, had conversations about Lizzo, uh, who is uh, similar to my wife. My wife plays the flute just like Lizzo. 
But uh-huh. if my wife was playing the flute, she would just be playing the flute. She wouldn't be doing all these extra shenanigans and the buffoonery to go with it. And um, and uh, one of the things that's interesting to me is that while we talk about engaging the artists that people know about, what a lot of us forget, I think, is that there are a lot of artists that we don't know about who are trying to get a shot. You know, uh, E-40's sister, Sugar T, has come mm-hmm. on this platform. Sugar T was really good. She had a really great song, a couple songs with E-40 back in the day. Mm-hmm. And she's creative just like her brother. She's talented just like her brother. She wants to get in the game just like her brother. But she made the, has made the argument that women who are not willing to go the extra mile, if you know what I mean, in terms of sexualizing themselves, have been kind of pushed out of the industry. That, that it's not just a matter of getting the Cardis and others to understand their role. It's, the question does become, why is it that we know about the Cardis and the Megans and we don't know about the thousands of other artists who say, look, I'm just here to I'm here to perform. I'm not here to do all this extra stuff. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on on just anything that I just said? I'm not going to frame it as a question because you're smart. Right. So you have something to say about that. Yeah, um, it's it's by design. You know, when it comes to what's the best way and I'm starting to learn because, you know, growing up in the Nation of Islam and growing up um, learning about the the what's the word not just miseducation but the the way the enemy thrives off of us not having the knowledge of self i think that one of the biggest things that contributes to white supremacy is the the programming of black inferiority so what more would you need to do if you make the black woman pretty much known worldwide as a, like you said, a Jezebel figure or a tool, because one that, that what it does is it makes a, it makes the black man look like he has no control over his woman. Um, And then it also, it shows that, well, if the black man is not going to protect his woman and tell her the importance of, um, you know, modesty and chastity, then that shows the mindset of the black male. And so the whole entire world is looking at this play out and they're seeing how the black man is also suffering from the lack of knowledge of himself and the black woman, we are suffering for the lack of knowledge of ourselves. And how does that play out? It, it literally shows up with this whole sexualization of ourselves, calling ourselves out of our names, the black man calling himself out of his name, um, the black man creating music that celebrates and praises killing themselves and killing other black men. And then the black woman um, basically singing praises about uh, lowering herself and, and being as promiscuous as possible. So I think that it's by design because it's, it's really putting money into the pockets of those who own corporations that even promote these things. So if you're a corporation, somebody might ask, well, how are they making money? This is how you make money from people who don't have a knowledge of their value or their worth. The way you do that is you set them up in a way, and of course we went through chattel slavery. We haven't psychologically recovered from 400 years of conditioning in slavery. And so we already started (laughs) behind the eight ball and just completely uh, with this inferior mindset, thinking that we we, uh, are less than because we are not white. So you start from that point and then as time goes on and that conditioning uh, continues, you bring in integration, which only uh, made white people's pockets fatter because of course, when you feel inferior in the at the core of your being, you are going to leave your businesses to get to other businesses, white businesses, because you think that their ice is colder. So we start shutting down all of our businesses And then, of course, flooding their businesses with our dollars. And now we're the biggest consumers to this day. The black man and woman of America, we we're like the top consumers. It seems like of everything. Um, I would have to get the actual, you know, statistics. But um, 
I just listened to TD Jakes today and he said that <laughs> that the black red woman is the highest consumer. So I'm I'm guessing he just not gonna say stuff. But um so so we are flooding their pockets because we we done closed our our movie theaters, closed our banks, closed our uh, you know restaurants. Now we're starting to get some of these things uh, back, uh, mostly restaurants. <laughs> but for the most part, I think that when you have the sexualized image, what you can do is you you're feeding into the depression um, because. The black woman is naturally chaste. The black woman is, is naturally, we're naturally modest. We're naturally righteous by nature. That's what we're taught. So if we're righteous by nature, when we're going against that, that's going to put heaviness on our minds. We're going to have um, all kinds of uh, mental illnesses. Um, and then, of course, there's abuse in the community. And so we're suffering from that. We have um, the men, the black men suffering, and then there's drug abuse, drug addiction. Um, I heard uh, our minister from Newark, Brother Abdul Haq, he said, when you have life subtractions, you you get uh, addictions. So <laughs> these addictions are coming from uh things that are being stripped from us, whether it be mm -hmm. knowledge of self or uh, don't know how to get their finances up and all these things. So you add on to yourself through addictions. And so we have addictions in the community. We have self-hate where we've got gang members uh, just killing each other off of colors and all these things. But all of that feeds the pockets of the hospitals. You know, it feeds the, po uh, the pockets of big pharma because mm. you got all these mental illnesses and you and the, I mean when I tell you in the hood the the pharmacies are just everybody got pills you know for hypertension all mm. the medical problems that you have because we don't know how to eat to live and have the proper diet so this is how ignorance funds the economy so they're going to push particular rappers and mm. female rappers, male rappers, they're going to push those images and those messages, not because they enjoy the music and not because the consumer really enjoys the music, but it's because it's going to feed the pockets in the long run because they know how these things play out for the medical field. They know how it plays out in business. Black people giving all their money to other people instead of creating their own businesses due to the lack of knowledge. So it's it's playing into their pockets. So to answer your question, the reason why we see certain type of female rappers put to the forefront is to keep that perpetual uh, inferiority complex going. Mm. Well, uh, everybody, I'm talking to Akila Nihanda. Uh, Akila is a very promising hip hop artist who, um, by the way, she's on a tour right now and she's going to be in Chicago uh, toward the end of July. I hope that all my Chicago people will go out there and support. Uh, is there what wasn't there? Was there like a coupon code people could use to get a discount? Yes. Definitely. Courtesy of the Black Business School. <laughs> yes. Yes. 50% off um, promo code for the show. It is Dr. Boyce B1, the number one, the letter B and the number one. So Dr. Boyce B1, and that's the promo code for 50% off of the ticket. So instead of $50, you would get it for $25. Nice. Okay. So that's all one word, right? Dr. Boyce mm -hmm. B1? Yes. One like, word. All one word. Okay. So, uh, so I, I want, I'm going to put out a challenge to everybody. A lot of y'all, I, I hear y'all in there saying, we need to have our own entertainment industry. We need to have our own media, our own everything, our own schools. Our own. Let me tell y'all what we've been doing. I'm about to do it like a, a I'm not, it's ain't, it's ain't really a brag. This is just an update uh, on what we've been trying to do. Okay. Uh, and, and shout out to John Boyd, uh, whose family, the Boyd family with victory and all that. I mean, they are so instrumental in this process. Here's what we've been doing. Number one. <laughs> 
We, and then we got to do it. And, and, and it's hard to do because we ain't doing this with the support of white people. We ain't getting corporate money. We ain't getting government support. In fact, we're getting blocked by some of these entities. Like, like, like literally that, that I told you how my whole Instagram page just dis- got disappeared and all, all of our Facebook platforms because I was reading Dr. Claude Anderson's books out loud, but I ain't going to stop. So this is going to be what it's going to be. But anyway, here's what we've been able to do, y'all. And I'm going to tie back to what I'm going to ask you all to do for uh, Akila. Um, we built the Black Business School. We have put, we have raised millions of dollars and pumped most of that money right back into the school. Uh, we've helped over probably ten million of our people learn to invest for the first time. A lot of y'all are buying real estate for the first time. A lot of y'all are, are building generational wealth for the first time. Uh, you are starting businesses, doing all kinds of great stuff. By all these things. Uh, so we have our own educational system. It's not big, but it, it is what it what we can do. Uh, and we commit to it. We're committed to it. Every Wednesday, for example, for years, we've been reading uh, Powernomics and doing Powernomics trainings every Wednesday for free for the entire community in the Black Business School. Y'all can show up for that if you want to. Just go to my website, boyswalkins.com. The links are there. Second thing we've been trying to do, and again, this these things take work, is, uh, you know, we, we, we've, we've had a lot of complaints about, give me a yes, give me a yes if you have the same complaints I have about Mo- the movie industry and the movie industry loves to make black people look crazy, stupid, violent, ignorant, everything. And that's not who we are. So we have been making movies. We have made several, several, I, I want to say about six movies, black owned movies, used our money. Uh, the newest, latest movie is B1 the movie. Akila is in that movie. Uh, and uh, along with so many other great people, Riza Islam and uh, and Dr. Claude Anderson, Brother Nuri Muhammad, uh, who else? Queen of Fua, just Madam President, just so many dope super dope people that are just as talented as the people you see on TV, but we got to back them. We got, we got to put these people out there. Right. So um, uh, what else have we done? Well, John Boyd and I have had many, many, many strategic meetings to talk about what it's going to really take to support the artists that we believe in. This is where we're getting to Aquila. I promise you there's a point to this. Um, You know, so when you talk about, the Aquila Nihundas, when you talk about the D1s, and you talk about the Victory Boyds, people that are taking righteous stands on behalf of black folks who ain't scared to be black, who ain't scared to represent, who ain't scared to be B1, who ain't scared to, re- to talk about where they from and hold it down like that. Uh, we've talked about how uh, John's connections through Rock Nation and everything else, how that can be leveraged into something that allows a, a bigger space for artists like this. This gets done more effectively if we get your support. So here's what I'm asking you to do. Akila's going to be performing in Chicago, I know, and she's got a tour. Uh, her website is akilasworld.com. It's right here on the screen. I'm asking you to consider this, especially if you got a little extra dough. If you can't, even if you can't go to the concert, I'm asking you to consider going to buy a ticket. She don't, the, 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 the sister done cut the price <laughs> so that so that so that you can go for you know on, on, on a budget. Right. Think about this. People, uh, you know, my wife and some of her friends, they went down to see Beyonce. It was the stadium's full. People paid hundreds and hundreds of dollars for those tickets. Some people paid over a thousand. I'm asking y'all to consider dropping 25 bucks or whatever you can afford <laughs> to support this sister, even if you can't go to the concert. If you can't go and you buy a ticket, you know what? They'll let somebody else, maybe they'll let somebody else in or they'll work something out, whatever. But you're supporting what you want to see. And and and, and the, here's the other thing, too. And, I, and you know, forgive me, Akila, for over-talking because I really need to make about this point home because I don't do a whole lot of begging, but I'm like TLC. I ain't too proud to beg when it comes <laughs> to something like this. Um, you, I'm not asking you to support a corny artist. I'm not asking you to support somebody with no talent. I'm not asking you to support somebody who ain't good. This lady, if you are a fan of hip hop, let me tell you, she flows like the best artist I heard. I mean, I came up in the whole Tupac era. I I, I done listened to the Biggies and the Jay Z's. You know, we cool with Ice Cube. He's been on this platform. Love Ice Cube. Akila is right there with the best of them. All she needs is the, is the platform that y'all can give her <laughs> as intelligent black people. So give this lady your a platform. Give her some support. That's what I'm saying. So her website. I hope that I hope that I hope y'all don't mind me. Give me a yes if it's okay if I kind of get a little bit animated with it. I, I I don't normally do this kind of thing, but I'm really trying to help uh, ask you all to be intentional. We got to do this just like we support Dr. Anderson. We have single handedly elevated his his uh, his think tank, mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm gonna tell you like this. Uh, I can't tell you how many celebrities called up Dr. Anderson. Some of these Negroes on TV called up Dr. Anderson and said, "Oh, I love what you got going on with Powernomics, but don't." But don't want to write a check. 
don't want to support nothing financially. But then you hear that same guy will be like talking about how he spent ten million dollars on a on a Ferrari or or whatever, right? You right. know, or, or or went to Jake the jeweler and dropped two million dollars. And so, I, so I'm not saying that there's something wrong with that. They can do whatever they want with their money. But what I'm saying is we got to turn this energy back toward our home and the people that we believe in. So uh, if you don't believe me, go check out Akila. Look her up. Follow her on social media. Listen to her music. I guarantee you will like it. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big connoisseur of hip hop. So I'm going to push the ball back to you, Akila. But I'm going to tell you, um, you know, another artist, another actually she happened to be a black woman. That, that a lot of people don't know about this artist, it, but but she became one of my favorite artists almost overnight. Have you ever happened to have heard of an artist named Lady Leisha out of, out of London? Out of London? Yes. She's Jamaican, but British. And, and Lady Leisha, when I when I saw you, I had the same reaction to your In terms of like the, the, the female artists that really impressed me, I, I still just tell y'all how old I am. Like I remember the first time I heard MC Light rap. That's that's see because I'm like I must that must sound like I'm a really old man compared to y'all. But but like MC Light had that effect on me. Um, and there were some others. Uh, Cardi B is very talented. I just wish you know we didn't have all the extra stuff, right? But I got to give credit where it's due. She's not she's she's good. Nicki Minaj very good. Uh, Lady Leisure is right up there too. Check out Lady Leisure because um, she's another. She actually got famous off. She blew up on a Verizon commercial. She does a series called Queen Speech. Oh, wow. and, and and it's really creative and it's not your qu- same style. Like, you know, you have, um, you're part of a culture, right. That's, that's mm-hmm. very B1, very, uh, uh, you know, just a certain culture, right. Her culture is slightly different, but she's still very talented. So maybe check her out. So anyway, I hope that give me a yes, y'all, if y'all can at least go follow her on social media, I'm asking you to be intentional. Give me a yes. If you're going to look her up on Instagram and follow her on the gram, send her a message, let her know, Hey, I, I saw you on the Dr. Boyce platform and I'm so uh, give me a yes if you can consider going to her website, maybe buying a ticket, even if it's not for yourself, just buy it for somebody else. They can let somebody else in for free or something like that. Uh, give me a yes, if especially if you live near Chicago or any of the cities she goes to, if you'll at least consider going out to the concert. I will go. I got I to gotta go. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm out, of the, out of the city at that time where I will be there. But, I, but I'm, I'm bringing this up to you all because I really need you all to understand if we want to have it, we got to build it. And I can't build it by myself. She can't build it by herself, but we can, but together we can do anything. So, uh, Akila, I'm going to go ahead and, and stop talking. I did not mean to talk so long, but I had to make it. I really wanted to communicate to everybody why it was so important for me to have this chance to talk with you. Because, uh, let me tell you this. So, so you, but you, so you've already kind of blown up a little bit though. Like you and I talked maybe a couple years ago and, and I wanted to, I saw you perform it or your, some of your, your videos and you work with your husband and I see your little daughter run around the background and I think it's, it's the cutest thing in the world. I saw when she had a little karate uniform on and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so what's that been like for you? Cause it, cause, so, so you kind of accelerate. I see some of your videos get like hundreds of thousands of views. Oh yeah. Um, and you work with your husband. What's that journey been like for you and how has it felt to kind of get more of the recognition you deserve? And what's that journey been like so far? So far, it's been kind of a it's a spiritual journey and a spiritual warfare. You know, for me, it's been me developing as a, a, a just a girl growing, becoming a woman and learning literally the principles, the universal principles that God had put in place when he created himself and when he created this universe, right? So I'm learning about the importance of being tapped into the creator in a way that is more, I'll say this, less ritualistic and more um, through an understanding, uh, more of like, I guess you could say as you get older, wisdom starts to come, right? And you start understanding why you are supposed to pray, why you are supposed to um, seek first the kingdom of God and all of these things and how everything else will be added unto you. So I would say that um, tapping into consistency, um, making sure that I'm serving the people. And I know for me, when I do anything that helps to elevate black people's minds, black people's consciousness, I get lots of blessings. <laughs> and mm. so I think that in learning that principle, it shows me not only the importance of being obedient to God, but it shows me the importance of black people and how he sees black people. 
because when you pour into black people, when you pour into the black community, when you really love your people, you don't condemn your people, but you make sure that you, you show them that you have to love yourself and you have to hold yourself at a higher regard and a higher esteem because I'm not saying that you're worthy, but God is saying that you're worthy. I'm not saying that you are, you know, royalty and that you're from the, uh, a royal bloodline. God is saying that we are royalty. We are from a royal bloodline. So uh, as, you know, I got married and then had my daughter and then just kept going with my music regardless of that. Because a lot of women, sometimes they stop once they start getting the family going and all that stuff. Sometimes they, if they had a, a vision of, you know, making it into a in a music scene and making it in quotations but you know maybe doing numbers or getting their music out there um but then they start having children or they get married sometimes they just stop doing it they slow down but instead what i did was i incorporated my family and was like well shoot my husband is a dj he's into music he loves music he has his own he put out his own um album years ago before we even met so I knew that I was in a position where my husband appreciates what I do, enjoys what I do, my, what my biggest cheerleader fan. So I said, well, I want him to be, you know, in the background because I, and it's something that I had to understand when everybody starts saying, ooh, I love the fact that your husband supports you in the background. And I'm like, yeah. I didn't realize how big of a deal it was until everybody was saying, man, when yeah. your husband is back there, that just cracks me up. I just love that. And then they Lonnie, And then, and so I'm like, wow, like black people really do need to see healthy black relationships. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's almost like we're starved. And I didn't, I didn't really think anything of it in that way. I did intentionally do that because I wanted the people to see like a man supporting a woman. But as time went on, I realized it was much deeper than that. Deeper mm -hmm. than I could have ever known. Like I said, it was almost as if we were starved for that type of imagery. So I said, Oh, well then I need to make sure I keep on, uh, having him, <laughs> you know, there in some way, shape or form, because, I mean, in all the other rappers, all the other rappers that you were talking about, um, they are married as well. So you got Cardi B, she's married. You got Nicki Minaj, she's married. Um, Meg Thee Stallion is not married, but you know she openly dates people, and and so when you, so they have spouses as well. But I think that the people are, um, I think they're looking for a certain type of representation that they feel is something that they can also uh, maybe show their children or, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because a lot of the other, uh, of our sisters in hip hop, a lot of their content is explicit. So even if they did have a healthy marriage, you know, it's hard to like show, you know, show your children them as an example of, Oh, this black fan because you're going to end up also seeing or hearing the content <laughs> so i think that people appreciate when the entire family can enjoy you know the content and and enjoy the music because my thing is like i don't understand why we as a people don't follow the blueprints of how you get way more people when you open up your your ability to, I guess, talk to all generations. So it's mm. like, did we not learn from Michael Jackson? Like, did we not, like all of the top selling people, like most of them didn't really curse that much, you know, or if at all, you know, so it's like, but even, even though we've seen the formula being proven, you know, that you don't have to, do these things in order to sell we still have told ourselves the lie that we do have to you know act a certain way or degrade ourselves in order to get 
the bag. And I'm like, but there's there's several people, even Lauren Hill, she got so many Grammys, she swept the Grammys with miseducation. Mm. And like, do we not remember that? <laughs> like, and she she wasn't re- cursing on her album really. She was covered up, you know, for the most part. And so I'm like, but we still told ourselves the lie. You know, I hear it all the time that um, you know, well, sex sells. And I'm like, did you not see like how Lauren Hill broke records? Like mm. he, he was the top, you know, sell- she broke records back in her like it was crazy. So who who lied and told us that? Because the proof, there's proof that that theory is not necessarily true. How old are you, Nikila? Akila, if I may ask, I, I know I'm you. 30, have I'm 32. 32. Okay. Uh, you know what I think? Um, I, I, I as a person who is uh 20 years older than you, I think <laughs> that one of the things that you that you're you're dealing with is that uh, Lauren Hill came up with a different cohort. Um, uh, you know, a lot of us still give me a yes in the chat if anybody else is in this category, but a lot of us can remember when the majority of, of communities had like a father and a mother in the house. Uh, a lot of us remember what the black community was like before crack cocaine just kind of ravaged everything, uh, and mass incarceration came along. And, uh, and what I believe is that the, in your generation, the reason that it's a little bit tougher for Lauren Hill to break through is uh, not because the talent isn't there and the value isn't there. And and not never guess people, there aren't millions of people who can't see it. But uh, if you watch shows like Love and Hip Hop or, uh, you know, some of these other shows that you see on TV, most of these young people, say age 34, 35, and say Chris Brown's age and younger, Mm -hmm. a lot of them are really traumatized. A lot of, most of them didn't have a mother and a father. They, uh, most of them, um, you know, had a, a lot of them had a, a relative or a parent in prison. A lot of them had a a mother or a father on drugs. Not everybody, <clears throat> not to typecast them all, but that's unfortunately they there's like a bond around this trauma, mm-hmm. you know, like just this idea when when I come along and I talk about, uh, you know, you know the mother, the father, and the family, and 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 this normal kind of upbringing, it almost sounds unrealistic for some people. They're like, I don't know no, nothing about what you're talking about, and and I see this a lot on the internet. When I see a lot of men who say, "Well, why in the heck? Why? Why would I want to get married? Like, why would I do that? Like, that doesn't make any sense." And I and I and then I'm like, "Oh, I guess it doesn't make sense because I saw my father working through the challenges of marriage because that's what he felt like he was supposed to do as a man." But if I never saw that, if all I saw was my mother struggling and doing it all by herself, and you know, and 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 you know, and she had Mister Wilson down the street that was her boyfriend, she never told us. Then I don't really even. It's like, well, why would a man sit around and 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 fight, you know, go back and forth with a woman when he could just be in the streets seeking pleasure, mm-hmm. right? And so, effectively, I think that that's what you're dealing with, in my opinion, is that um, the changes in the music were a reflection of the changes in the community, and then uh, you know, life imitated art, art imitated life, and also as a person who was around, I saw the transition to hip hop, where it went from very, you know, positive and uplifting and very intelligent. To really just kind of being um, just kind of weird and disrespectful and uh, glorifying drugs and drug dealing, drug selling, all that. I think a lot of that correlated with what was also happening politically and otherwise in the community. Right. So 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 to your point, uh, you're right. Um, you know, a Lauren Hill. There's so many people that would appreciate that Lauren Hillish message, you know, like like you are part of that tradition. And I'm hopeful that there will be enough people there that will really give you that support. But but when I look around, honestly, I kind of I get I take give an example. One of the things that made me so sad, there was a young lady that I that I mentored for many years, still do love her to death. Uh, she's from the inner city and she's about 30. What year is this? She's 31 years old. And uh, I remember when she was in high school, I, mean, I knew her when, when she was nine. I was her track coach and she was nine. And to this day, you know, we still talk all the time. And uh, and I remember when she was in high on her high school basketball team. And I said, out of all your friends at your school, how many of your friends have a father that lives inside the house? And she could not think of one single friend. She had one friend whose mama's boyfriend lived there, but the rest of them, not one single one of her friends had a father in the house. I mm-hmm. said, on your basketball team, out of all the girls on the team, how many of them have two parents? Zero. Like I would go to the games and support her and there wouldn't be other men there. There would be the mothers there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, out of all the girls on the basketball team, how many girls are straight versus gay? The overwhelming majority were gay. 
Mm. You know, and, and then they and they would engage in these interesting behaviors. They they would get in um, fights. They would fight. They they'd be in the bathroom punching each other out like dudes fighting over a girl. You Ooh. know, and 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 it was like this. So I honestly believe, and I hope I don't sound too. Uh, I don't want to sound disrespectful when I say this because my heart goes out for this. But I think that what happens is that because we've been put in this very unnatural environment, you see some behaviors that are almost unna- that are a little bit unnatural. And I think that's and I think hip hop is just a reflection of that. Yeah. You know, that, that's why when somebody like me comes along and says the things that I say, people think, they, they, you know, they, they might say, oh, you sound uppity, mm-hmm. you know. And see, and I think that's something that, well, one, I wasn't raised with my dad either. So I grew up in a single parent household and my mom, she she did everything. But I think one of the differences is because I was born and raised in the nation of Islam, I had a village and I had a village that really supported me and i saw a lot of men a lot of black men who were upstanding black men who were decent black men who respected me respected you know black women so it's almost like i had enough uncles you know and enough you know male figures around me where i still understood the the value of just black family and black you know unity and it's interesting because i i thought about it later and i said wow the friends that i had in school because i've been in public school my whole life i started public school at six years old before public school i was at a private school um but yeah i started public school at six so it was pretty much my whole school career and but i realized that all of the girls that i ended up being friends with in elementary school high school, middle school, most of them actually had a two parent household. So it's um, the ones that like, that I gravitated toward. So Mm. it's like an energy, right? So it's like, it's interesting because the majority of the, you know, of black people in my community was in a single parent household, like how I was. Mm-hmm. But because I had a village, my energy was as if mm. I had a two-parent household. You know what I mean? So my friends even were people in two-parent households. So I thought that was kind of interesting how your energy mm-hmm. has something to do with who you gravitate towards, you know, how you mm-hmm. relate to them. And I was going to say something. I lost my train of thought. But, yeah, I think that that is important but if we were to like i I like something that um it was a discussion about you know black men you know taking responsibility and um and holding themselves accountable as well instead of always putting it on the black woman like oh you you getting pregnant and you know and you 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 single and i'm like well she didn't get pregnant by herself. <laughs> I'm almost willing to bet that she didn't go after you. You went after her. Like, so mm-hmm. at the end of the day, who left who? And it's that's that's a whole nother story. But I well, think that's, that's a big sides, conversation. Yeah, I think that both sides, the black man and the black woman, need to take accountability for the condition that the community is in. And of course there's a much bigger, you know, situation even above that. But now we're at a position and we have enough education where we should be able to get ourselves out of this condition and we have enough money. So it shows you that, like you said earlier, you, you, you know, given people like me, given people like Dr. Claude Anderson, you know, all these people dabs, but you paying you know, a jeweler, like a million dollars for a chain. So I'm like, what could we have done with that million dollars? Like Mm -hmm. people who are genuinely trying to help the black community, what could we have done with that? So it just shows you that the priorities is just not in the, the right order. And I do agree. I do believe that a lot of us are traumatized, you know, um, cause it is traumatizing to not live with your father. It is traumatizing. I know for me at one point, um, you know, even though I had a community, there were certain times where I was just like, man, what would that be like, you know, with, you know, two parents? 
And even though it wasn't a thought that came a lot, it still came, you know, you know, mm-hmm. every now and then like, oh, this would be, hmm, I wonder what that have been. But I don't know. I was, I was, I was a little different. Like I, I kind of just floated on. I think my mom played a really big role in keeping me like fulfilled in, in ways. So I never really felt like a, a huge void, but I think when I was younger, like, like elementary age, when you're, you know, bored at the house, <laughs> that's when those thoughts come like, man, I wish I could, you know, do, cause you're bored, you know, but it, it's, but that's a little different. So I think as a community, we really need to tighten up and, and help each other out. If you see single parents, if you see single mothers, like, take the children out to an activity or something like, you know, take them to the first baseball game, do something so that it's not just us complaining about, well, you know, you got children, where's the dad? And it's like, well, let's just, let's figure this out together, mm-hmm. you know, cause this is just what it is right now. So I think also, you know, I never want to, to, to be pitted against our sisters in hip hop. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I think that one of the tactics of the enemy is they know that the majority of the young girls, they have like the ear, they're listening to the Cardis, the Megs, you know, they're listening to those girls. And so what they'd rather do is like pit somebody like me or a India Ari, because, you know, mm. India called out the twerking at the Essence Fest. So yeah. they rather like, pit us against them. And that's why India Ari was saying, no, I love them. I'm just saying that this constant portrayal of sexualization is damaging the rest of black women who Mm -hmm. don't want that as their image. Mm -hmm. So, but the goal is, well, let's just pit them against each other because, you know, then all those girls that like Meg and Cardi, they're definitely not going to like the India Iris and the Akila Nihondas, you know, because they feel like, oh, almost like a gang, like, well, mm-hmm. she's not on the Cardi team or she not a, mind you, what they don't know is, would I ever do a song with any of them? Absolutely. Would I be doing my, my version of the song and my words and, and keeping my clothes on and all that stuff? Absolutely. But I have no, I have no, like, um, like you said, people say you're, you know, they might say you're uppity because we have a certain type of mindset. It's like, we're not uppity. Just like you went on the show and talked, um, to what's the guy that you talked to recently? Uh, oh, Corey Holcomb. Yeah. You didn't, you, you went up and talked to him. Like we don't have problems, um, with our brothers and sisters. We will have conversations I would, like I said, I would even do songs with them. I don't care. I watch Carisha's show. Carisha, please. I watch that because I want to know how she thinks. I want to know like what she's on and I enjoy her interview. So, you know, at the end of the day, like they can try to pit me against uh, those women if they want to, but they're not going to, that's not going to work because I'm going to constantly say that they're my sisters and that there's a misunderstanding as to what uh, the value of the woman is and it's unfortunate that it's playing out in the public their misunderstanding or you know uh the misunderstanding of the importance of black women but i think that we're coming to a point in a time where people are getting annoyed and people are getting tired of the same sexualizing of the black woman if you look at the comments on the shade room anytime they post something where there's another girl twerking and stuff You'll look at the comments and they're all like, oh, we're so tired of this. Is there anything Mm -hmm. else you could do? We know everybody can shake their butt, you know. So the people are getting tired of it. So at the end of the Mm day, shoot, the the whole conscious, the so-called conscious movement is rising. People are getting tired of that. Right on. Well, you know what? Uh, if, if everybody who's tired of it, say yes in the chat if you are <laughs> tired of it. I want to hear about all the other people that are tired of it. And if you are tired of it, then I hope you will uh, consider going to Akila's website. This is Akila Nihanda. She is uh, one of the best rappers out here, and she is um, really doing some amazing stuff. She's going to perform in Chicago uh, July 30th, correct? Is that the date? Yes, sir. Okay. And, uh, and also, she's going on tour to some other cities, right? Is that correct? Uh-huh. Yeah. 
So New, uh, it, next oh, New York and then Atlanta. Oh, then Atlanta. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. So, so Chicago, New York, Atlanta, Houston. Okay. Okay. So if everybody wants to see all the cities she's going to go to Aquila's Uh, if you live in another city, uh, fly in, you know, make it a weekend, you know, but people flying for Beyonce. I'm telling you fly. If you fly, if you're flying for these other artists, you can fly in for her. Uh, also, uh, if you want to learn more about what she's got going on, want to see the schedule, just go to Aquila's Uh, for those listening on Spotify, which by the way, if you look up my name on Spotify, you can find the podcast there. Uh, just look up Aquila's world. It's spelled A-K-I-L-A-H-S, A-K-I-L-A-H-S, Aquila's world.com. And, uh, actually I made a mistake that the stupid, the, the dang spell correct, uh, it misspelled your name in the title of the video. So I had to go fix that. So uh-huh. thank you all to those of you that pointed it out to me. So I made sure I got that correct. I, I want to make sure I'm coming correct when I'm dealing with the, uh, the new queen of hip hop. So, uh, anyway, everybody, thank, thank you so much. Uh, uh, all, all the smoke. <laughs> what did you say? I said, you're going to get all the smoke to me. Everybody go like, ah, oh, now she the queen of hip hop. Oh, I, I don't care. I'm ready for the smoke. I, I live in the smoke. So you bring, that's right. Y'all got to understand. Y'all, y'all, y'all think you're bringing the smoke, but shoot, I, 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 I live for the smoke. I'm ready for the smoke. <laughs> even with, even with Corey Holcomb, I told him, I said, man, I, you know, I, I'm not worried about pushback, but I understand also as a man that it's very important that we reconcile because we're trying, you know, we need to set an example mm-hmm. and I'm better off in my life with you as my friend than as my enemy. Yeah. And uh, so I would ra- rather seek out common ground with you as opposed to uh, rallying around the things that make us different. And uh, and then I, and then at the end, I told Corey, I said, I look forward to going to your show, uh, having dinner with you and becoming your friend. And I'm sorry for any part I played in uh, any of the confusion. And we did that intentionally. Uh, thanks to Willie D, because uh, we kind of all felt like, you know what, we're grown men. We got to ch- we got to we got to. You know, we can't be out here acting a fool. So uh, that was why we did it. And ain't none of us perfect. So y'all and y'all see me do many imperfect things on this platform. I'm going to do more imperfect things in the future. And I hope you can forgive me in advance. So anyway, uh, with that, without further ado, uh, the Aquila's So I hope you guys will go take a look either uh either go to you can use the uh the discount was it? it's dr boyce b1 all one word right and you get 50 percent off that's a hell i miss an amazing deal uh <laughs> on tickets that, that already are priced very fairly uh so use the code dr boyce b1 all one word and you get 50 percent off if you can't go i'm asking you i'm i'm really am asking you uh you know if, if you, you drop the 25 bucks buy a ticket for somebody else just go to the site buy a ticket $25. You can't even go to dinner at Applebee's for $25, but it makes a difference because we're building a music industry. John Boyd, Victory Boyd, his family, the, the whole Boyd family. By the way, Victory, if y'all have ever heard Victory Boyd, Victory and, and Aquila, they performed at the All Black National Convention. Uh, the Boyd family is, first of all, they are the new Jackson 5, except probably better. I, I dare say that. Uh, or just as good. How about that? Um, because Victory has two sisters that will blow your socks off and and she has brothers that i mean y'all have to see this family perform they're going to be at the all black national convention this year and uh and i'm just telling you i when i tell you that this is a big opportunity for the b1 community because not because they're already rocking the world they're already going globally performing Mm -hmm. victory sang for jay-z and he signed her right on the spot that's so i'm not just blowing smoke here but uh, when I tell you that her sisters and her, she's got a brother that plays the guitar, like the whole family is like t- on 10 in terms of talent. Mm-hmm. And the beauty of it is not just the talent because we've had a lot of talented black people. We, we just, we, we just breathe talent. We're just amazing like that. But the cool thing about their family is that John, when he saw his daughter rising up the ranks, he brought her to one of our events and he said, I want her to be rooted and grounded in the B1 community so that when she goes out and conquers the world, she'll never forget where she came from. Mm. So this is a power play, y'all. This is a power play, no different from the power play the Jewish community used when they built Hollywood in their own image. We're building something greater in our image, in the B1 image. It's going to take 20, 30, 40, 50 years to do it, but I need y'all to see it so we can start training the kids on it so they can finish the work when we're done. Got it? Give me a yes in the chat so I know that I did something good today, that I said something that you'll remember. And uh, I want to say thank you, Akila. I appreciate you coming in. Thank you so much. I was going to also say there's also a tip jar on the AquilasWorld.com. So if you didn't want to do it like a, a ticket, you can just give a donation. It's a, on my website as well. It says tip jar. So thank you so much for, for having me on this show. Um, just like you said, you know, 
even with me and the other artists, I feel like we're better together than uh, focusing on our differences. Um, and we as a group and as a people, we can conquer this world. We just have some, you know, some things to handle. But besides that, they're all my sisters and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the hustle and, um, and we can, uh, let's all hustle together, but push the culture forward, not backwards. All right. Push the culture forward. Everybody type the word forward in the chat. Uh, thank you, Akila Nihonda, for our special guest. And uh, thank you all for joining us. Akila's website is akilasworld.com. Uh, also, just a reminder for those of you that want to join us at this year's All Black National Convention, it's going to be in Atlanta at the Marriott Marquis Hotel. The discounted tickets are going to, um, uh, the, the discount's going to end very soon. So if you'd like to get your pass uh, for this year's convention, go to allblacknationalconvention.com. The URL is on the screen. Also, if you have a black owned business, you can be a vendor or a sponsor and we'll market you on this platform. Uh, so feel free to go to allblacknationalconvention.com to get more information. Everybody hit the thumbs up button, thumbs up, uh, share, make sure you hit the notification bell. Uh, we we are out of here. Y'all have a wonderful day. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.